Hi, and welcome again to HTML. This time we're going to look at making colors in HTML to improve the look of our web page by making it a little more exciting. The way to make colors in HTML is to use a set of numbers known as the RGB color scheme. If you remember that TVs and monitors use three colors of light, and that's the red light, green light, and blue light, in order to draw anything on your computer screen. This is known as the RGB color scheme, R for red, G for green, and B for blue. If you mix all these three colors together to their highest intensities, you'll see that you get white. And if you mix all the colors with their lowest intensity, or if you set them all to zero, then you get black. So just imagine that you're in a room completely closed off with no lights on. If you don't have any lights, then the room appears dark, doesn't it? So here's how we can create the color code for black, and this will help tell us how to make different colors appear on our web page. The HTML color code for black, three sets of two zeros. They're just all zeros. The number sign in front means that we're using a hexadecimal number. So the hexadecimal number is a format used by computers that gives us values from 0 to 255 using only the digits from 0 to 9, which are the normal digits that we use in the decimal number system. But it also allows us to use the letters A to F, which re will represent numbers higher than 9, or actually between the numbers between uh, 10 to 15. So with black, we have a set of all zeros. The first two zeros represent the amount of red in the color. The second set of numbers represents the amount of green. So if we turn on any of the green, or if we have just green on, then this middle value will be higher than the other values. And finally, the last two digits represent the amount of blue. So if I don't have any red light, and I don't have any green light, and I don't have any blue light, and if those are the only three lights that I have, then the color of the screen will be black. So when you're using HTML, make sure you spell color the American way. We can set the background color of the web page using the color attribute known as the BG color attribute of the body tag. So you can see that I have a body tag, and inside the body tag I had an attribute called BG color, and its value is going to be the, the color that I want. So since black is a set of all zeros, then that's what the color for a, a background color for black looks like. If I wanted to set the background color to red, then I simply replace the red values, which is the first two digits of that color, and I can change it to any value I want. But just as an example, to set the background to be, to be a very bright red, then the highest value I can use is FF. You can see on this set of charts, and this chart is also available on the CP102 website, that FF is the highest number you can get with two hexadecimal digits. Its decimal value is 255, so I can actually use these hexadecimal values to get any number between 0 and 255. So if you look at the top, we have white, which is, has all the red, all the green, and all the blue turned on as high as possible. If we look at blue, then there's no red light and there's no green light, but all the blue light that we need is turned on to the highest. And the same with green and red. We simply have those components turned on brightest, but we have no other color components. The next three colors that you see here, cyan, yellow, and magenta, are combinations of either red, green, or blue light. So I can get cyan, which is a blue-green color, by mixing blue and green light together. So I want you to, I'd recommend that you learn how to mix these colors together so that you can recognize what these basic eight colors are, including white and black, but also take a look at uh, the shades on the right-hand side. Now, by decreasing the intensity of the light, I can get different shades of the same color. So if I turn off all the red and I turn off all the green, then I can just have different shades of blue, as you can see on this page. Memorize these colors. You'll find it very useful. So here we see a list of the color names. Instead of just using hexadecimal values, you can actually use color names, as we'll see in a few minutes. These are the basic colors that I want you to learn for the class. We have white and black, which are either the absences of all the colors, so they're all zeros, or the presence of all the colors in white, where you maximize the values for all the color values. Then we have red, green, and blue, which are the component colors. And then by mixing the component colors, you can get cyan, yellow, and magenta. So magenta is a combination of red and blue, and yellow is a combination of red and green. And remember, we're talking about colored light. We're not, colored, we're not talking about colored ink. 
because if you mix red and green ink together, you get something very horrible. But if you mix colored light together, you'll get the colors used for web pages and television. Now you don't have to really memorize all the possible colors because I'll give you a nice tool that allows you to pick and choose the colors you want and it's known as the Visibone Color Lab. So let's visit that site now. Now as you can see, this web page states that this is the 216 color Webmasters palette and it was originally decided when the World Wide Web was first started to being used that colors look different on a Mac and a PC so that if you want your colors on your website to look the same on both platforms, you could only use these 216 colors. The improvements over technology over the last few years has made that pretty much not very true, but it is very common for people to only use these 216 colors. So if I find a color like red, then I can click on it, and I can see its hexadecimal value, and I can see a name for it, and I can also see the value in decimal, which would be the R, G, and B values. So if I have red, then I have 255, which is the highest value you can get in red, and there is no green, and there is no blue. Now you'll also see a set of numbers known as the CMYK values. CMYK are the colors cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And those four colors are used when you print something using ink on paper. So if you're a web designer and you want your company's logo to look the same on paper as it does on your website, then you need to learn the combination of HTML colors and CMYK values. So now that I have red chosen, let's take a look at another color, maybe yellow. If I choose yellow, I can see again that it gives me the HTML or the hexadecimal color values at the top. So I know that yellow is a combination of a lot of red, a lot of green, and quite a little bit of blue, but not a, a whole bunch of blue, because if it was any brighter, it would probably be white. And then beside it, I can see what the values represented in hexadecimal are actually known to us in decimal values. Now you can also see what the color red will look like on a yellow background or what yellow will look like on a red background. So if you choose a number of different colors, you'll see that you'll get different options and you'll start to see how you can choose different colors, learn their hexadecimal values, and be able to use them in your websites. So that's a look at the Visibone Color Lab. Now you don't have to memorize those hexadecimal values. You can choose them from the Color Lab or you can actually use some color names that are usable inside web browsers. There are a number of basic color names that you can choose from, like black, yellow, magenta, and red, like we've seen earlier. Now, in order to use those names, you just place them in the BG color attribute like we did before, except now we're using names, so we don't have the number sign in front to represent hexadecimal values. But if you want more interesting colors, let's check out this web page I've created on color names, which is also linked from the CP102 website. Now, here's a page that has some few different colors on it, and you can see down at the bottom that I've got some samples for you to look at directly. All of these colors are in bold, so they look a little brighter, but you can see that this color is called blanched almond, white, snow, and azure. And maybe you, can't, you might not be able to tell that there are actually three different colors there. Well, four is if you count blanched almond. So the background is a color called uh, steel blue, and the text is actually called burly wood. So these are names that you can use inside your HTML. Now there's a link here called the HTML Color Names at W3Schools, and W3Schools is a really good website for you to go to when you want to learn more about HTML. Now the color names at W3Schools are actually very, interested, are very interesting. These are the colors supported by all web browsers, for the majority of web browsers, which pretty much means anything made in the last five to eight years. You can click on a color name or its hex value and see what they look like with different backgrounds. So as you can see here, there's a whole long list of colored names, and there's my, one of my favorites, Burley Wood or Cadet Blue. And you can see it's hexadecimal values, so now you can use it directly inside your HTML code instead of using the color names. And you can also see right beside it what the color is actually going to look like. So if I click on a button, a color called Chocolate, then I can see a whole bunch of text with background color as chocolate, and then I can see that color, a different color of text, and what it looks like combined together. So this is one way you could look at different ways to mix colors and if you see a combination you like just learn its hexadecimal value and then you can continue on. Now back on this website, uh, back on the color names page, there's also a shades link and a mixing link. And if you click on a shade of maybe brown, shades of brown can show you that just by changing the intensity of each of the color values you get different shades of these colors and I can choose one and I can see how these hexadecimal values 
appear differently. And then I can actually select the color, copy it, and paste it into my HTML pages. If I didn't like the shades, I can just go backwards, and I can see the uh, colors again, and I can choose Mix. Now if I choose Mix, I actually get the ability to choose a color at the top and a color at the bottom, and then I can see what they mix look when I can see what they look like when they mix together. So this could be again another way for you to combine colors together, find your hexadecimal values, and place them inside your website. That's all we need to know about using colors in hexadecimal and colors in your web pages. Make sure you learn the basic hex values though, because it's the standard for web page design. When you view a web page, the colors are probably included in hexadecimal values and you should start learning to recognize the basic ones. In the next video, we'll take a look at putting these colors inside your web page.